Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. How blessed we are again to be able to come together and study the word of the Lord, to dig deep into his word uh, and uh, come up with the jewels and the treasures and the truth that he has deposited in his holy word. Uh, we are grateful to the Lord for sparing us to this another Tuesday evening. And we pray that all are well and safe and sound as we continue uh, to press our way through these days of uh, distancing and isolation. Uh, we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, but uh, we don't want to uh, rush too fast uh, towards that light lest we find ourselves in the tunnel longer than we need to be. Uh, so while we continue to move in a uh, positive direction, uh, we are once again able to gather together uh, via these uh, uh, medium, media, and uh, technological uh, means uh, and study the word of God together. Amen. And tonight we are continuing uh, in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. We are finishing up uh, the first chapter of first Corinthians. Uh, and, uh, while, while I'm thinking about it, let me just make a quick little plug, uh, for those who, uh, or plug or congratulations, however you want to look at it. Uh, for those who are, uh, following along with us, uh, in our Bible reading plan, our one year Bible reading plan, as we're going through it. Uh, if you, if you've been, uh, sticking with the, the schedule and you're up to date, uh, you, you should have by this time, uh, completed the gospel according to St. Mark. Uh, so, uh, for those who maybe this is your first time through the Bible, congratulations, uh, who have completed an entire book of the Bible, uh, uh is no small feat. Uh, as we have said, there are many, uh, within the body of Christ who uh, not only can't, they say they've read through the whole Bible, they haven't read through an entire book of the Bible, especially not a gospel. Maybe they've read through uh, all of Jude. Maybe they've read through uh, all of Jonah, uh, but not one of the gospels. So if you've done that, that's something to be grateful to the Lord that he has uh, allowed you to be able to get that entire story, the entire story of the Lord uh, as, uh, as it has been given to us by Mark. Uh, but tonight, our lesson is coming again from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 26 through 31. And our topic is Christ, the wisdom of God. Christ, the wisdom of God. Last week, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, impressed upon the Corinthians and upon us that we preach Christ crucified. Uh, and uh, tonight, he is continuing in his thought uh, and uh, helping us to see uh, that Christ is indeed the wisdom of God, uh, that regardless of uh, what we uh, may lack, regardless of uh, how we may come up short compared to uh, what those in the world might expect or, or hope to see in us, uh, that we uh, have Christ and that Christ is himself the wisdom of God. Uh, so again, we are in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. Uh, let's hear the word of the Lord. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught those things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Thus ends the reading of the word. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, how we do thank you once again for this time, this unmerited privilege 
that you have granted us to come again to study your word. And we ask, Lord, that as we open your word tonight, that you would open up our hearts and our minds, that we would behold your truth, that we would be impacted by your truth, and that we would then apply your truth to our daily living. We do give you honor, glory, and praise. And it's in Jesus' matchless name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So again, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, is uh, endeavoring to uh, help the Corinthians see um, the, uh, the reality of, of who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, uh, and what God has done in calling them into, uh, into the kingdom, into uh, Christ, uh, being new creatures in Christ. And he's, he's going to set and juxtapose uh, who they are in Christ as a body in Christ. Because again, we're st he's still dealing with the divisions that were in the church. Uh, even as he's on this tangent uh, about the gospel and Christ crucified, he wants to bring it back around to, to them being in the church, being in Christ, and uh, why they should have no divisions in the church. Uh, so, so he, he, he calls them to see uh, uh, what it is that they have been brought into uh, and, and, to, and to really be sober-minded about who they are uh, individually and collectively as Christian people. Verse 26, he says, For ye see your calling, brethren. You see your calling. Uh, he, he's inviting them to uh, kind of reflect on their standing as Christian men and women. And yes, he says brethren, but this is a, uh, Adelphoi, it's a, it's a term that could be used to, to signify men only or men and women. So this is really brothers and sisters. Uh, he's using it in a, a generic term to refer to all of the, 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 his fellow believers. And he says, you see your calling. In other words, take a look at uh, at your invitation. Take a look at, at what you have been called into. Take a look at those around you who have been called together uh, with you into this. And, and one of the things that's so uh, uh, wonderful uh, and, and, and apparent that we often miss is that he is addressing the church. He's addressing the body. This is not an, an individualistic uh, address. He's saying, look around you, brethren and sisterin. Look around you. Look at, look at your, 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 your fellow believers. All of you have been called into this. All of you have been made a part of this. All of you have been made one uh, in Christ Jesus. So he says, uh, you see your, your calling, brethren. And he says, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He says, those that have been called, those that are there in the church with you, those that are a part of the fellowship of this faith, there are not a whole lot of wise or mighty or noble people in this group. Not, not, not a lot of them or you uh, are in those kinds of categories. First, he says, there's not many wise men. And, and the, the Greek word there is sophos. And, and that simply means uh, learned or uh, uh, cultured or skilled. He says there's not a whole lot of, uh, 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 shall we say, super smart people uh, in this particular group there in Corinth. There's not many of you. There may have been some, but not many. Uh, and, and, and again, what, what we'll see here is that this is really kind of uh, a, a still in, in place in the, 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 the body of Christ, especially globally as we think about it. Uh, but he says, first of all, there's not many wise among you. And, and, and we, we see that this is not uh, something that was just in Corinth, but it was something that was kind of uh, uh, indicative of the church as a whole. You look at Acts 4, Acts 4 and 13, uh, after uh, Peter and John had uh, uh, miraculously uh, healed the man laid at the temple gate. Uh, the Bible says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Yeah, that, that, that'll preach all night long. Uh, but the thing that we want to see here is that Peter and John, 
uh, two of the two of the twelve, two of the the, the founders, if you will, uh, of the church. Uh, they were uneducated and untrained men. Uh, all, all of the men uh, that, that that Jesus got to be his uh, apostles. Uh, he he didn't go uh, to the rabbinical school. He didn't go uh, to the, the 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 Pharisee training center. Uh, no, he went to the docks. He he went to where the fishermen were, right? He went to the to the tax collectors' tables. Uh, he, he, he went and got a, a, a regular folk uh, and, and brought them in, not, not, not the wise, not the highfalutin, not the, not the fellows with all the degrees. He said, but he said these were not the wise folk uh, that, that he went after. And it was the same thing in Corinth. He says, not many wise uh, after the flesh, not many wise men after the flesh. Again, this is how the world regards wisdom. This is the, 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 that worldly wisdom that we talked about last week. Not many wise men after the flesh. Not, not, not many men who are going to be impressive uh, with how uh, well-educated they are or, or how uh, erudite they are, to, to, to borrow a term from last week. He says, that's not what you'll find uh, among those who have been called like you. Then he says, uh, not many mighty. Not many mighty. The Greek word there is dunatas. Uh, and that means strong or powerful or influential. Uh, so, 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 so there weren't any, uh, weren't a whole lot of big shots uh, in the church at Corinth. Not, not a lot of mighty folk, not a lot of folk with a, a lot of cachet or a lot of prestige. Not, 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 not folks that could kind of, you know, uh, 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 move to the front of the line because of, of who they were or who they knew. There wasn't a whole lot of folk like that in the church at Corinth. Then he says, not many noble, not many noble. The, the Greek word there is eugenes, uh, eugenes. And that means uh, well-born. Uh, that, that's what he means when he talks about noble. Not, not many people of noble birth. Uh, not, not many uh, royal family types in the church. Not a lot of Kennedys in the church, if we could put it in a 21st century perspective. Not, not, not anybody who is who gets the royal treatment. Uh, uh, Harry and Meghan were not in the church at Corinth. Nobody of, 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 of royal lineage was in the church. Well, notice he says, not many. Now, he doesn't say that there, there weren't any, but he says, not many. Not many in that group. And, and, and again, this is something that, that I would submit is still the case in the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, especially when you consider the, the, the global church of Jesus Christ. A lot of times when we think about the church, all we think about is our church or the, 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 the churches in our uh, community or in our city or, or those people who have uh, prominent TV and, and internet ministries, people whose names we know. And we, when we think about the church, that's, that's as far as our minds go. But what, you have to, what we have to realize is that from a, a global perspective, what we understand as church is, is a, only a small slice of what the church is. I did a little research on this today and discovered that 10%, uh, uh, actually 11%, 11% of the Christians in the world live in the United States. 11%. Uh, so, so our whole context and understanding of what the church is, what the church is like, is really only 10 or 11% of the church. 90, 89% of the Christians in the world live elsewhere. 89% of the Christians in the world live in other countries other than the United States. So, so, so we have to understand that what we understand about the church might be narrow compared to what's going on in the rest of the world. And in the rest of the world, the vast majority of the Christians are those uh, in the, in the two thirds world. Those in, in sub-Saharan Africa, those in, in, in Asia, those in, in Latin and Central America, that's where the church is growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, and many of those people uh, are, are among these that, 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 that Paul would describe as not mighty uh, and, and not wise and, and not noble. These, again, aren't the big shots. These aren't the folks uh, who, who, who have all the power and all the money. Uh, it, it's, the, it's those who are regarded in some cases as the underclass. Uh, those are the ones who are running into the church. Those are the ones who make up the, the vast majority of the body of Christ. And it's, it's, it's something that, that, that we have to uh, kind of wrap our minds around uh, and, and, and embrace uh, that, that that's who we are. 
Now, as a church, and we, there, there may be some, and we're going to look at this a little bit uh, later in the lesson, but there, there may be some who are, you know, uh, uh, among those who are noble or are mighty or are wise by uh, worldly standards. Uh, and that's fine. That's nice. But understand that that's not most of us. Most of us don't, don't, don't meet those criteria. Uh, so Paul says, not many uh, among you are, uh, are of that uh, uh, upper echelon uh, of society. Uh, but then he says this in verse 27, he says, don't, don't feel bad about it. He says, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And he goes on, but, 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 but what we want to see, first of all, is that God has chosen the folks that he's chosen. He's chosen not just the people individually, but the kinds of people that he has chosen, uh, that, that, are make, that make up the church. He has chosen them. This has not happened by accident. It didn't just uh, uh, turn out this way. God chose those who make up his church. Uh, the, 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 the Bible says this, one of my uh, uh, favorite Old Testament passages in, in Deuteronomy 7, as Moses is, 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 is giving his, his final words to the children of Israel as they're about to pass over into the promised land, uh, he says this, Deuteronomy 7, beginning at verse 6, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Here it is, verse seven. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all people. Verse eight says, but because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He says, the Lord did not choose you or set his love upon you because you were the, 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 the biggest and most important and most impressive group of people. He says, no, he says you were the, the, the least of people. You were the fewest. He says, your greatness came in me choosing you. And, and that's the, the case for us today. Uh, uh, each and every one of us who's been uh, brought into the body of Christ, uh, uh, we've said it before, the best thing about me is the fact that I'm a Christian. That's the very best thing uh, about me. He said, that's, that, that's, what, that's, that, that's what makes me, if, that, if there's anything that makes me worth noting, that's it, that God chose me that God picked me, that God pulled me and called me to himself. He says that, that these are the ones that God has chosen. And look what he says. He says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The, 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 the wise didn't get chosen, but the foolish things did. Uh, uh, in Luke 10, Luke 10, verse 21, uh, this is where uh, the, 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 the 70 that Jesus has sent out uh, to, to heal the sick and, and cast out demons, when they, after they come back rejoicing that the, the, the spirits are subject to them, and Jesus says, don't rejoice because the spirits are subject, but rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, the Bible says, the, the next thing that he says in verse 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it so it seemed good in your sight. See, we're back at that choosing. The fact that God chose to reveal it to whom he chose to reveal it and chose to hide it from those he chose to hide it. He has hidden these things, Jesus says, from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them to babes because so it seemed good in his sight. And then James, in James 2 and 5, he, he kind of puts his two cents in to help us here. He says, listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? He says that it's not a coincidence that this faith is, is appealing to those who don't have a lot, that, 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 that the vast majority of those who are, uh, again, running into the kingdom and pressing into the kingdom are not those uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, a seven-figure income, are not those uh, on, on the Forbes top 30 and top 50 and top 500 list. Those aren't the people. Now, there we got a few. There are a few of those who are in the body, but the vast majority of us are the rest of us. Uh, we are the 99%. That, that, that's the church. Uh, by and large, that is the church. 
So he says that, that, that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Uh, he's chosen the, 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 the foolish, the moros, which again, we had that last week, which, which simply means stupid. It means moronic. He's chosen the, the, what the world views as stupid. He has chosen those uh, ideas. He's chosen those individuals to confound the, 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 the wise. He's chosen the, 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 the weak to confound the mighty. He's chosen things that, that, that don't seem to, to be important and don't seem to have any power to them. He's chosen those things to confound the things that do seem uh, to, to have a lot going for them. He says that, that he's chosen these things. That, it goes back to what, he's, what he said last week about the, the foolishness of preaching. And there's a lot of people who have a, a low view of preachers and preaching, uh, even within the church. There's a lot of folks that are trying to push preaching to the side and put something else in the place of preaching. Uh, they, 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 don't, they don't want to see uh, uh, just somebody uh, uh, proclaiming what thus saith the Lord. They're like, give us, give us something uh, uh, special. Give us something new. Give us something to razzle dazzle us. Uh, show us some film clips. Uh, 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 put some, put some, uh, 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 some theatrics uh, in in your performance. Uh, let's have a, a, a stage show instead of a sermon. Now, this, there's nothing wrong with 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 uh, arts and, and arts ministries, uh, but, but they can't take the place of the proclamation of the gospel. The word needs to be preached. There must be preaching going on. There must be again the proclamation of the word. Uh, and he says, Paul says that God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He's chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things. And the, the word confound, uh, the, the Greek word there literally means to disgrace or uh, to put to shame or to put to utter confusion. He says, I, I want it to be so that the, 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 the big shots of the world are, are completely uh, 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 put to confusion by why it is uh, that these uh, uh, uneducated, uh, uh, ignoble, uh, not wise, not sophisticated, not mighty, not powerful, how it is that these people are turning the world upside down. I, I want them to be confounded. I want them to, to not even be able to figure it out. And, and we've seen this is, this is part of God's M.O., he, he loves to have Gideon, as we studied uh, a few weeks ago, cut his army down uh, to 300 and, and defeat an army of thousands with just uh, the, the sound of breaking pottery and, and, and the light from a torch, uh, causing the army to, to, to turn against themselves and head for the hills. He loves to do that. He loves to defeat a Goliath with a, with a little David. Uh, he, he loves... Uh, to, to, to turn the tables uh, on, on those who seem like they obviously uh, are going to prevail and they obviously are going to win. He, he wants to make it clear to the world and to us that it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And it reminds me when I was uh, thinking about this and, and, and looking at this, uh, I, I got a flashback uh, to to our to my younger days, uh, something that I'm sure many of us, if not all of us, can can identify with uh, the, the the ritual. If you were uh, going to to play any kind of a game, whether it be in in, in gym or in PE, or whether it be uh, on your, your your street in your neighborhood, uh, the ritual of picking teams, uh, picking teams where, where where whoever the whoever the two were who were determined to be the captains of the two teams would look over the field of, of players, all the kids in the class or all the kids in the neighborhood, whatever the, the case might have been, and they would begin to pick teams. They'd go back and forth. And somebody would say, I got Jimmy. Somebody else would say, I got Tommy. Somebody else would say, I got Pee Wee. Somebody else would say, I got Junebug. And they'd go back and forth picking teams. And they'd always, you'd always be, uh, um, the person picking the team, they, they want to pick the, 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 the strongest, the fastest, uh, the, the best player, whatever the sport they were playing was, you try to pick that person. Uh, that's the one you want on your team, the one who's uh, the biggest, the one who's the fastest, the one who's the strongest. Uh, 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 but, but if God uh, were going to pick teams, he's going to go in the opposite direction. He said, give me the little scrawny one, 
give, give, give me, give me the little uh, slow run, slow one. G give me the the, the 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 tubby one that can't run fast at all. Those are the ones I want on my team because because God is is about something more than just uh, getting uh, folks who who look strong and, and can do it themselves anyway. Uh, he wants to get the maximum amount of glory. So he's going to choose those that don't seem to have it, that don't have it going on, that don't have the, 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 the odds in their favor. Those are the ones that he wants on his team. So, so he has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. He wants to show the world, I can do more with the foolish and the weak than you can do uh, with the wise and the mighty. Uh, in, in my hands, uh, I can do uh, uh, infinitely more uh, with your, your weakest and most despised and cast off society member uh, than you can with the, with the brightest and the best. Uh, so he goes on in verse 20 to continue to, to pick off and, and count off who, who God has called and who, who God has chosen. Verse 20, he says, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. I, I want us to, to, to pause here for a moment, that he has chosen base things. Base, the, the, the Greek word there is agones. And agones is the exact opposite of eugenes. Now, we remember that, 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 that the eugenes were, were the noble. When he says not many noble, not many eugenes are called. He says, I'm not calling the eugenes, I'm calling the agones. I'm not calling the ones who are of a noble birth. I'm calling the ones who are of no birth, the ones who are of low birth, the ones who are born on the wrong side of the tracks. Those are the ones I want. Those are, the, those are the ones God says, that's who I'm calling. Because I want the, the, the base things of this world and things which are despised, things which are treated with contempt, things that are rejected. And when we think about it, it that, that these are the ones that God has chosen. These are the ones that the Lord wants to use. It makes sense when you understand that this is who the Lord was as he walked on the earth. This is who he was prophesied to be. If we think back to, to Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 and 3 says he's despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. See, Jesus came with this mantle. Jesus came uh, with this on him, this, this whole notion of being despised and being rejected and being overlooked and being cast off and cast aside and cast away and being despised. That, that, that was his whole earthly ministry. So, so as he uh, engages and creates his church, that he, he's keeping that going. He's keeping in that same flow and that same stream. Give me the despised. Give me the rejected. Give me the, 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 the unesteemed. Give me the ignoble. Give me the base. G give me those who are, who, are, who, are, who are looked down upon. That's who I want in my church. That, 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 that those are the ones uh, that I'm going to use and use mightily. Those things, those tactics, those strategies that, that, that seem so uh, impractical, seem so uh, 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 unusable, maybe even old-fashioned. Give those to me, the Lord says, and I'll make them work uh, in a way that, can, that, that will be undeniable. Uh, we, 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 we see that this is what his whole ministry was about. If you think about the, 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 the ones that Jesus went to, yes, again, there were a few. You had a Nicodemus here and a Joseph of Arimathea there, but for the most part, it was tax collectors and lepers and prostitutes and those who, again, who had been cast aside and cast out. Those were the ones that he went to. Those were the ones who followed him. Those were the ones that were uh, that rejoiced over the kingdom while the, the, the upper echelon, the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, rejected their own salvation because they refused to acknowledge their need of a savior. So, so he's going among uh, those who are cast aside. 
He's going among those who are left out. Uh, and this is what, what the apostle Paul uh, tries to get across to them here. And he, and he goes even further uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 4. And we're going to get there in a few weeks, but just to help us to see the point that he is driving at. Uh, he has to, uh, uh, again, uh, correct the Corinthians uh, in their understanding on this. In 1 Corinthians 4, uh, beginning at verse 10, Paul says this, We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. To the present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. Being defamed, we entreat. Here it is. We have been made as the filth of the world, the offscouring of all things until now. Paul is castigating the Corinthians for, for their, if you will, high and mighty attitudes. They're, they're, they're a little hoity-toity, as my mother would say. Uh, they, they, they got their nose in the air because they, 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 they think they're so wise and they're so strong and they're so distinguished. But Paul says, we're, we are weak. We are despised. You all, you all got, got, got wisdom on lock, but, but we are, are fools for Christ's sake. And it, it reminds me of, of our uh, the, the church, especially the church here in, in, in the States, our, our preoccupation uh, with uh, celebrity uh, within the church. And, and, and we get so excited when somebody who's famous either comes to, to the Lord, joins the church, or, or, or acknowledges the fact that they're Christian. Now, now I rejoice with anybody who gives their life to Christ and, and, and gains eternal life. But, but I'm happy for them. I'm not happy for the church. I'm not thinking, uh, uh, we ought not to think that, that, that now that uh, uh, Kanye West uh, has gotten saved, uh, that now the church, we're going we're gonna to go gangbusters now. Uh, now we, we got Justin Bieber, so, so, so we're good now. Oh, what, what a wonderful thing when a, a, a professional athlete uh, names the name of Christ. And oh, we're so excited because they're going to do so much for the church. Beloved, the, the Lord does not need the celebrity of the day, the flavor of the month. He does not need a famous man or a famous woman to bring himself glory. And, 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 and Paul is saying, you all are so wise, but we're fools for Christ's sake. You, you all are so, so strong, but we are weak. You, you, you're so excited uh, over, over trying to, 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 to flaunt and to flex and to floss like the world does. Why can't you be satisfied with being the, the weak ones that you are who, whose strength is found in Christ? Let your wisdom be found in Christ. Uh, let your honor be in Christ. It, 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 it's, it's, it, it's heartbreaking when the church apes the world and, and tries and, and finds its fulfillment in the things that the world finds its fulfillment in. I, 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 I probably uh, will, 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 will be on the unpopular opinion uh, podcast for this, but, but I think one of the, the, the worst things uh, that had happened uh, to, to, to gospel music was when we started having award shows Brothers and sisters, beloved, why are we aping the world? Listen, the, 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 the Grammys were giving us a little bit of love. They, they cast a little uh, uh, trinkets at us, but we weren't satisfied. We had to have our own award show so that we could get dressed up and we could feel special and we could say, I'm the best. Beloved, that's, that, that, that's not who we are. That's not who the church is. That's our carnality bubbling to the surface. Paul says, we are fools for Christ's sake. We are weak. We are dishonored. And, and when, I, when I read this passage, I can almost imagine our brothers and sisters in the two-thirds world speaking to us. Uh, we are fools for Christ's sake. The, our brothers and sisters in, in, in the persecuted church could be speaking these words to us in our comfort here in the West. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. He says, well, we're not building our hopes 
on uh, on what's happening right now. Because what's happening right now uh, is, is, is not hopeful for us. So, so we don't have any delusions about kingdoms here on this planet. We know that, that, that heaven is our ultimate and eternal home. Uh, and, and this is what Paul understood, and I believe he's trying to get the Corinthians then and us today to understand that, that it's not about uh, uh, how much wisdom we have, how much worldly uh, claim we have, or how much uh, accolades and, 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 and appreciation we get from, from those uh, in, in society and in the culture. That's not what the Lord was looking for, and that's not who what we should be looking for. The Lord was saying, give me uh, the, the, the ones that the world says there's nothing to them, and, and, and I'll use them uh, for my glory, and I'll bless them while I use them. So this, 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 these are the, the, the otherworldly, the, the upside down standards of our God. And, and, and I don't know if you are glad, but you ought to be glad. If you're not glad, you ought to be glad that the Lord does not run his church the way the world runs their stuff. That he doesn't look at a, a resume. He Nobody had to apply to become a Christian. No, nobody had to, to, to submit their, 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 their curriculum vitae in order to become a Christian. Not one of us had to go through a background check. To become a Christian. Not one of us had to get our credit report uh, 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 perused and looked at. No, no, none of us had that happen to us because if it did happen to us, many of us would be disqualified. If the Lord ran the church the way the world runs, uh, uh, the way the bank gives out loans or the way uh, 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 employers give out employment, a lot of us would be on the outside looking in. But thanks be to God, he does not look on the outward appearance like man does. Uh, he does not uh, choose based on who's going to be uh, the, 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 the best for him. Uh, he, he chooses based on who he can do the best for. Uh, who, who's going to look to him and be grateful for what the Lord has done? Who acknowledges their need, their weakness, their lowliness, their foolishness? And, and, and looks to, 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 to Jesus as the author and finisher of their faith. These are the people that the Lord chooses. And then we have to ask ourselves the question, why did God choose these kinds of people? Why does he choose the weak, the, 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 the ignoble, uh, the base, the despised, the, the foolish? Why does he choose these people and these tactics and, and these means? Why, why doesn't he use uh, the, 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 the CEO model and, and the, and the seeker sensitive model and, and the, and the pragmatic model. Why doesn't he use any of those models? Why does he still use this, this preaching and teaching the word and worship and, and praise and, and, and giving and why, why is he still using this? This is why in verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. He says, I'm going to get the glory and I'm no other flesh is going to glory in my presence. Isaiah says it like this in Isaiah 42. The Lord said to Isaiah in Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. He says, my glory I will not give to another. As we said before, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I'm not going to give you a leg to stand on to try to take credit for your salvation. I'm not going to give you a leg to stand on to try to take credit for the growth of your church. I'm not going to give you a leg to stand on to try to take credit for your own uh, sanctification and redemption as we're about to see. He says, I did it. And I will not share my glory. I will not give my glory to another. No, my praise to carved images. You're not going to put this on your idols. You're not going to put this on your intellect. You're not going to put this on your connection. You're not going to put this on who you know or how long you've known them. It's not going to be because your, 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 your grandfather was president of this or that, the other thing. No, I'm not going to let you idolize your way out of my glory. I'm going to get the glory out of this. No flesh should glory in his presence. So I'm going to choose uh, the, the, the lowly. I'm going to choose the, the, the man and the woman with no reputation. I, I'm going to choose the, the, the one 
uh, who, who doesn't have it going on. And here's the thing, even if we do have a little bit of education or a little bit of status, or a little bit of standing uh, economically, whatever the case may be, the, the reason that he has chosen you and I is our recognition and our, of, of our needing, of the necessity of a savior. That, that these little things that we have, these little standings and these little achievements and these little trinkets don't really amount to anything eternally. They're, they're, they're nice down here, but they don't matter at all from an eternal perspective. So he says, no flesh will glory in his presence. Then he says this in verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus. He says, of him are ye in Christ Jesus. It wasn't your standing again. It wasn't your status. It, 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 it wasn't your, your sparkling personality. It wasn't your money. It wasn't your job. It wasn't your family. It was you are of him in Christ Jesus. He called you. He chose you. Not because you had so much to offer but because he set his love on you. That's why. I, I still recall uh, several years ago uh, when, when uh, an individual uh, uh, came uh, into the, 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 the fellowship, came into a worship uh, setting at the church uh, this was several years ago, several years ago. Uh, and this individual came and uh, was, was contemplating joining the church, came down and, and had remarks at the end of the service and, and was talking about he was possibly and considering joining the church. Uh, and as he was sharing his considerations about joining the church, he shared that, you know, when, when, uh, when, when I joined the church, uh, you know, that, that, that church is going to be blessed. I, I've been very generous uh, in, in giving to my, my, my past churches and in whatever church I join, that church is really going to be, I, they're going to get their socks knocked off by, by what I give. Cause I'm, cause I'm, cause I'm, cause I'm kind of a big deal. I'm, I'm kind of important. I, I kind of got a heavy wallet. And, and if I join this church, y'all are you sure going to be excited about me joining this church? I can talk about him like this cause he didn't join the church. Uh, he, he came down the aisle and, 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 and took the mic and said a few things and, and nobody saw him again. Uh, but, but a lot of people have that mindset that, that, that they should be uh, celebrated uh, and should be fawned over because of what they bring to the church. Help us, Lord, today. Uh, because I can do this and I can do that and I can bring this and I can bring that. That's good. That's nice. We're grateful for all that. But understand that the, 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 the Lord uh, will, will use somebody with, 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 with not even 10% of what you got uh, and, and, and do 200% more <laughs> than what you would do by yourself. Uh, the, the, the temperament and, and attitude uh, and, and arrogance can can nullify and, and cancel out whatever effectiveness we might have had, uh, even in just in the natural, uh, because again, the Lord doesn't look on the outward appearance. He doesn't, he doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our talent. He gave us everything that we have. And if he gave it to us, he can give it to somebody else who will use it for his glory and not theirs. So he says, of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. He says, of God, Christ is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. What's he saying? Everything that we lack, Christ is made that to us. So if we lack wisdom, Christ is made wisdom to us. If we lack righteousness, and we do, we do lack righteousness because all our righteousness is filthy rags, then Christ is made righteousness to us. If, if we lack sanctification, and until we are born again, we surely lack sanctification, Christ is made sanctification. And if we lack redemption, and again, those who are not yet born again lack redemption, Christ is made to them. Redemption. So, so, so even the, the foolish among us are made wise in Christ. The, the, the unrighteous and ungodly among us are made righteous in Christ. Uh, those who are uh, uh, wallowing around in the mire and the muck of the world right now are made sanctified in Christ. 
and those that are lost and the world says that, 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 that there's no hope for them. They, they, they can't be made right. They can't be made whole. They can't be cleaned up. Those folks are made redeemed in Christ. Yeah, there, there, there's nobody that's beyond the reach of Christ's love and power. And he says that, that we have been, that Christ has been made to us all that we lack. So, so we don't need to try to puff ourselves up and convince ourselves that we have something that we don't have or we are something that we are not. For Christ has made to us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So he says, no flesh is going to glory in my presence because I'm going to, through Christ, make out of you what I need you to be. Make out of you what I have called you to be. I'm going to call you to it, and then I'm going to make you it through Jesus Christ. Paul says it like this in Romans 3. Romans 3, beginning at verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood, as a substitute for sin by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. See, he says, I'm going to use Jesus so that I can show myself to be righteous and to show myself to be merciful. I'm going to be just, and I'm going to justify the one who has faith in Christ Jesus. Then he says this in verse 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, by the law of faith. What's he saying there? That we've got nothing to boast about. We who are born again, we can't point to anything other than the grace of God in Christ Jesus. That's why the Apostle Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's not me, nothing special about me. G G God could have gotten anybody to do what he's done in me and done through me. I'm just glad to be in the number. I'm just glad that, 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 that Christ came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, that he used the chief of sinners for his glory and for his purposes and for his church. So he says in verse 31, conclusion, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Yeah. If you're going to glory, if you're going to show off, if you're going to get excited, if you're going to get puffed up, fine. Just make sure you're puffed up in the Lord. Just make sure you're puffed up over who Jesus is and what he has done. Make sure that you're glorying in the, 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 the marvelous and unsurpassed wisdom and grace of God. And that, that's, that's the, the, the testimony of the Bible. That's what we are here to do, to, to give God glory, to, 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 to worship him and enjoy him forever, to glorify him through ceaseless ages. Psalm 29, 1 and 2. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 115 and 1 says this, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Not unto us, not unto us. We, 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 we bear this treasure in earthen vessels, Paul says, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. That don't, don't, don't glorify me. Don't, 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 don't get excited over me. And, and, and Lord, help me not to get excited about myself, but to you be the glory. And then my favorite, Jeremiah 9, verses 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this. Here it is, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these I delight, 
says the Lord. The Lord delights in loving kindness, in judgment, and in righteousness. And he says, if you're going to glory in anything, glory in the fact that you know me. Glory in the Lord. Let him that glories glory in the Lord. Christ is the wisdom of God, and he's made wisdom to us. And that's reason to glorify God, uh, that all that I have, uh, all that I am, I am by the grace of God, and that he chose me and is using me in spite of me, in spite of my weakness, in spite of my foolishness, in spite of my frailty. Uh, the Lord has uh, chosen me because he set his love upon me. Not because I could offer so much, not because I was going to be such a blessing to the church, but because he set his love upon me. He chose me because he felt like it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you're saved today, it's the same for you. He chose you because he felt like it and made you his child. In spite of your weaknesses and your frailties, he chose you so that all the glory would go to him. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for his word. We thank the Lord for the truth of his word and the uh, power of his word. And we pray that uh, something that we have said, something that we have gone over has uh, impacted us uh, in a way that will uh, inspire us uh, to serve the Lord with gladness as we go forward. Uh, do we have any questions? We do not. Uh, so again, we say God bless you, everyone. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for one another. Uh, let's continue to look out for one another. We invite you as always to join us on our prayer line tomorrow at noon, tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, and let's just continue uh, to hold fast to the Lord uh, for he has provided for us everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness and he will carry us through. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, how we do thank you, how we do praise you, how we do honor and adore you. We ask, oh God, that you would help us to remember once again that it is not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Uh, help us to rejoice in the fact that it's not many noble and not many wise and not many mighty who are called, uh, but, but that you call folk like us, uh, folk who didn't have a whole lot going for them, folk who didn't have a, a name in lights, uh, folks who, who couldn't offer you anything, uh, but you offered us everything. Uh, you saved us, you redeemed us, and through Christ you have made us your own. Uh, how we rejoice and how we adore you tonight uh, for your great love and grace that you've showered down upon us. Help us, O oh God, uh, to uh, walk in a manner that is pleasing unto you. Help us to serve you with gladness as we go from day to day. We'll be ever so careful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. And it is in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and we'll see you soon.